In this video, I will show you exactly why I do not like internally routed rear triangle cables. Hey folks, we are back with another video, and in this video we will be replacing the lower bushings on an Ibis Ripley V4 frame. I love Ibis Ripley frames, but without a doubt, they will creak over time, right? Put a couple of thousand miles on a frame a year, it will absolutely start to creak. 99% of the time, the creaks are going to come from the lower linkages, okay? So if it's a V1, V2, V3 frame, I put money that if you hear creaks, especially on the downward stroke, it's going to be the lower eccentric bolt. In this case, V4 frame, it's going to be from the lower bushing. Now, my buddy is saying that, yep, every time he pedals, he hears this thing creaking. So we are going to replace these bushings. In order to do that, I have to disassemble and remove the whole rear triangle. And while I do that, I will show you exactly why I do not like internally routed rear triangle cables. I just don't think they're necessary. I'm lucky on this frame, I only have a rear brake uh, cable to worry about. The shifter is an axis shifter. It's wireless on this particular frame. So I don't have a rear cable coming through the inside of the rear triangle on this side, right? So that's one less thing for me, but ultimately even this one, it's gonna to prove to be a bit of a pain in the butt. So next up, let's go over the tools needed to get this job done, as well as the parts needed. As for tools needed, we will be needing a six millimeter Allen key and a five millimeter Allen key. Um, for one of, or two of the bolts, they're in a real tight spot. So you're either gonna need a small five millimeter Allen key, or if you have a mini ratchet with a, with a mini key set, which I've been meaning to get for the longest time, I keep on forgetting, um, you could use that. So that would be even better than using this. So, cause there are two bolts that are in a really weird spot. Now, you're gonna need a bearing extractor and a bearing install tool basically, right? So this is one from Ibis. I've used it for, for Ripley's for years. Uh, so I will be able to use it on this project. But if you have a uh, bearing extractor tool that's not all that big and bulky that will fit in a relatively tight spot, you should be able to use it. Uh, if not, uh, well, you're going to need some kind of bearing extractor tool, right? And with the tool, and this is a first for me based off this new design, <clears throat> we're going to need a cassette tool and either a 10 millimeter or a 3 8 socket. The, idea is we put both these inside the bearing extractor tool and the socket will push out the bushing into the cassette tool basically so we'll find out this is a first for me i've never had to do that before usually i use different uh guides for extraction and uh and uh and insertion so loctite we're going to need loctite blue 243 do not use red on this red is too strong you don't need it uh, grease, any kind of water, uh, waterproof grease, basically. In fact, I might use part tool on this one. I got a few other greases. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the crystal, but this just happened to be here, right? We are going to need a torque wrench. And that is pretty much it that I know of. Any other tools that might be needed for this job, we'll figure it out as we go through it. Uh, and we'll take it from there. Next up, parts needed in order to get this job done. As for parts needed, we need bushings. So I know for a fact this frame squeaks. Chances are on uh, Ripley frames, whether it's the older versions or the newer versions, it's going to be the lower bushing on the newer bushings, uh, versions or the lower eccentric core on the older versions, the V3s, the V2s, so on and so forth. Those, without a doubt, if you hear a squeak, it is 99% chance the lower eccentric core has started to wear, and you're gonna have to change out that core. So you really don't need to spend like 100, 150 bucks for all the parts. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be the case. Over here, I'm very confident that it's the lower bushing, so we're definitely gonna re be replacing this. This is the upper bushing kit. Typically the upper bushings don't take a beating or as much, nowhere near a beating as the lower bushings. So if I could save, I'm gonna inspect the bushings and if they're in good shape, I'm gonna save them for now. 
and use this kit later on if I need it. So, uh, but yeah, inspect the bushings if you take them out and um, try and salvage this kit. If you don't need to change them, why change them? All right. So at a minimum, we will be needing the lower bushing kit for sure for this job. Next up, let's start taking apart a frame. Okay, first step to this job is we need to remove the clevis and the rear shock. Okay, so first we're gonna start removing the clevis bolts. We need a six millimeter Allen. Now on this side, there's a bolt. On the other side, there will be a nut, though not your typical nut. It's a custom nut. All right, Ta -da. take these, put them on the side. And then we have one on the other side over here. Let's see. There we go. All right. And then we need the five millimeter to remove the shock mount bolts. What the? Is it a four millimeter? Did I mess up? What do I have here? Oh, it is a five millimeter. Why is this not fitting in? Whoa. That is really, really odd. Oh, wow. These park tools, I swear to God. Okay, that side fits. Guys, I said my own curiosity now. I'm guessing is that this park tool, so I'm going to do a review on park tools, I swear to God because they're starting to piss me off. All right, we'll use this side. So we are taking off the shock mount bolt. And that's it. So now we lift the whole thing carefully. Might have to wedge it out a little bit. And the clevis and shock are removed. Next up, we will remove the linkages. The upper linkage has four bolts, two on the inside, two on the outside. The two on the inside are in a real tight spot, so you can't use a regular T-sized Allen key. You're gonna either need a short Allen key, or as I mentioned, you'll need a mini ratchet with a mini socket set, Allen key socket set, right? This is a five millimeter. Um, the non-drive side, we will turn lefty-loosey. That's gonna be a bit of a pain. Two thousand years later. Ta da! One side out. Put that on the side. And now we got to deal with this side. And this side is going to be, again, lefty loosey. But since I'm looking from the other way, there we go. Uh. That's got to be close. By hand, that's close. There we go. Second one out. Now, let's take care of the other ones. Take a five millimeter and lefty loosey. You know, all these have Loctite on them, so they're all going to be a little bit stiff. And we're going to have to clean the old Loctite out and put new Loctite in when we assemble it all. Later, so this is one. Put 
that on the side. Make sure you keep them all in order. And we will do this side. And this one's out. Let's remove the top linkage, right? And this, we're just gonna literally swing it back and slide it out, just like that. All right, and we're gonna put that on the side. And now, we are going to work on removing the lower linkages. First, we need to loosen the pinch bolts. Five millimeter short Allen key, because the frame is gonna get in the way over here, right? So, lefty loosey, top side down. Let's take this guy, and we're just loosening him up. Same goes on the other side. There's one on this side, you probably can't see it from the camera. Lefty loosey. And done. Okay. So now, might have to loosen this guy a little bit more. Shouldn't have to remove him. Okay. Now let's take out the bolts. And this, I believe, is a six millimeter. Okay. So, counterclockwise. Oop, well, we gotta find that later. And there's one on this side, except, so this bolt is on the back side of the frame, on the other side it's gonna be on the front side of the frame, you can't, on the frame you can't miss it. And again, lefty loosey on this guy. We might have to hold this guy down. There we go. And he is out. Now, we are going to want to remove the whole back part of the frame. Now, here's my issue. I want to work on both sides of this thing. In order to work on both sides of this thing, I need this thing completely out of the way. And because we have an internally routed cable, we have to hang it, but we risk actually doing damage in some way or form. Now, I got lucky because I only have cable on one side, but if I had a cable coming here on the other side, it would literally be, re I would not be able to get it around and hang it down. It would literally be hanging off the back over here and stretching and pulling on the cable. There's just no need for it. It would have been a lot easier just to be able to remove the rear brake or remove a rear shifter, take the cables, put them on the side, and remove this whole thing, because then if I could remove this whole thing, I could go in there and take it somewhere and give it a good wash down, you know, clean areas on the inside real easily as opposed to now. It's just a pain in the butt. It's not needed. It's, it's, it's just dumb. They need to stop doing internal router, internally routed cables on full suspension bikes. Well, internally routed rear triangle cables on full suspension bikes, because let's face it, full suspension bikes need work done on the rear triangle, right? So... Um, yeah, so that's my reasoning behind it. All right, so next we need to remove, there is a cap on each side, okay? We need to remove both those caps, put those on the side. Then we need to remove the linkage, this is the rear one. And this is the front triangle one. Let me just pop it out. Done. Done. We popped it out. See, how does that look in the camera? Yep, we popped it out. This is the front one. Okay. So then we have our O rings that we will be replacing. When removing these guys, there is an O ring that goes on the outside of the bushing over here, and just watch out, it might get stuck on the inside of the linkage, all right? So next, we need to remove the uh, bushings, okay? In order to do that, well, there's a tool that we're gonna need. We're gonna need a soft mallet 
and some kind of punch to be able to just tap it out. Okay, so here's an example of a tool needed where we realized it during the job. We need something to, a punch of some sort to take out this bushing on each side. I'm using an extension to a ratchet set, the big side, with a mallet, right? So basically we're gonna put it on the inside and we're gonna hit, we're gonna edge it, we're gonna place it on the edge, on the inner edge of the bushing and just give it a couple of taps. Boom. And he is out. We have to do the same thing on this side, on the rear triangle now, right? The only thing is, again, we don't have leverage on anything, so let's just hope for the best. Give it a couple of good taps. One. And two. Our bushings are out. This is just dumb. I mean, I, I, I just, it's, I, 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 I don't like it. So now, next, Prior to installing or reassembling everything with new bushings, we want to clean everything best we can, right? So we want to clean all our linkages, all our holes, all our all, all, all the grooves where the O-rings go in, uh, whatever dirt there is there, we want to remove. Make sure no dirt goes into your bottom bracket. Uh, if it does, clean the bottom bracket out. Just be careful cleaning it. We want to do that for every part that we just dealt with, okay? So I will do that. I'm not going to put that on camera and I will be back when I am done. Oh yeah, don't forget to remove the seals on the lower triangle as well on both sides. Okay. And I will be back as far as after cleaning everything. We are back from cleaning and I came across a couple of issues uh, that are going to have to be dealt with. So when it comes to cleaning, the most important, well, the most important, it's important to clean around the outer area here where the O-ring goes for the linkages, because you don't want dirt to go in between the O-ring. You don't want dirt to seep in basically, right? Same on this side, and this goes for both sides. So you definitely want to clean in this area and in this area. You want to clean the inside as well, because we're going to have to put in new bushings and that needs to be super clean. We don't want debris in between the bushing and the metal. And you also want to clean the threads out of in here. Actually, I don't know if you can see that up there. Can you see that up there? No, you can't see that up there. So threads within the frame over here, as well as the threads in the rear triangle around here. So the issues that I came across is this is one of the linkages, the upper linkages. Um, the bearings in it, the thinner bearings are, 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 are shot. They are just grindy, both of them on each side are grindy, like, like they're just super grindy. So um, I don't know right now of a way to replace the actual bearings, but I know my buddy did buy the uh, an additional linkage set just in case something went wrong. So I am going to change it, but I don't like the idea of having to swap out a perfectly good piece of metal just because of a, a four one dollar bearings, if not less. Right? I go crazy Eddie's buy these bearings for super cheap. It's just a question of figuring out the best way to pop them out, which is pretty easy. But the best way to put them in that definitely I need to look into. So, but I'm not going to deal with that in this video. I'm gonna look into that for future purposes. So I will be changing um, the upper linkage. The other thing is I will be also changing uh, this portion of the upper linkage as well, because on this side there is a bit of, I don't know if it's corrosion or wear. So I do have the set, I might as well do it. I didn't wanna do it, I was hoping to maybe do it next year and save them the cost, but since I'm gonna be doing these bushings, and now I'm gonna be doing the linkage. I might as well do this one too and get it out of the way. So when we get to this portion of uh, the assembly, I'll show you how to remove these two components over, or these two uh, bushings over here. All right, so next let's start with the assembly. Okay, 
So before we put the bushings in, we want to make sure that we are totally spotless in there on both sides. You get these brushes. Uh, I don't know if I got it on Amazon. I mean, they were super cheap. I think I actually might have got this at my uh, local hardware store. So, but they come in handy for stuff like this, right? So, um, let's just take some towel, put it in there, make sure that we are completely spotless. Put it all the way through and push it out the other side. That should be good there. I don't need that one. And we will do the same thing here. If you see that on camera, I can't tell. Just can't. Put this guy all the way through. And pull him out the other side. Cool. Okay, so we should be totally clean. Now, we are going to need bushings and the IBIS bearing press tool. All right, and the way this works is We're gonna use this side of the tool to put the bushing on. And we're gonna slip that through. Then we're gonna attach the other side of the tool. Screw it on. And once it's flat, make sure that we are centered well. And we're gonna use the other side to screw this guy in. I don't think you can see it well. All right. Until he is snug. Do not crank down on him mega hard. So that guy is done. Oops. Grab our next bushing. Again, put him on here. Slip them through. Sorry for kicking the camera tripod or camera stand. Screw this guy in. Make sure we're all centered and start cranking down. I know you can't see that side, but same thing. And he's going in. And he is snug down there. Fun. Let's unscrew these guys. And now we will do the same for the rear triangle. So for the rear triangle, we are doing the same thing. This guy here, from inside. And make sure he is centered. And slowly but surely, start spinning. Well, I'm probably gonna bottom out on this side. Could you see him? Actually, you can't see him, damn. And you'll see he is going in. So dumb, having to hang him off a cable like that. I'm just glad I only have one cable. Okay, until he is snug. Take him out. Now we do the reverse on the other side. Make sure he's lined up. There we go. Screw him in. And now we're going to run into an issue. We're going to have to use this side to finish him up. And snug. Our new lower bushings are in. All right, so next we need to put in the O-rings. With the O-rings, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of grease and put them on the O-rings. 
Then we're going to put the O-rings on, just like that. Okay, two. Three. And four. On this side. Okay, our O-rings are on. Now let's take some grease and put them on the outside. Just like that. On all four of them. All right, we're also going to put grease in the top caps. All right. And we got this guy here. So next we are going to need our lower linkages, right? So we got the lower axles, whatever they're called, and the covers plus the screws. Now the screws are the ones with the larger heads that fit on here, all right? So just an FYI. So basically what we're gonna do is, if you remember correctly, on the, non, on the drive side, the pinch bolt was attached to the rear triangle. So that being the case, we're gonna insert this guy in just like that. Okay, into the frame. Oops, I screwed up. No, I didn't. I wanted to do something before I did that actually. Let's take him back out. What I want to do is put some grease at the base over here so when we push it in, it'll collect and pack up to the outside, right? That should help, again, with moisture and dirt getting on the inside. Okay, so let's do that again. And remember, pinch bolt facing upwards on the drive side. There we go, okay? So that means that this one with the pinch bolt facing upwards goes onto the um, rear triangle. So again, let's put a little bit of grease. All right. And the rear triangle goes like this. So basically we want this guy facing forward with the pinch bolt facing up. All right, take them. Oops, yep, and we're gonna put them in just like that. All right, so at that point, what we're gonna do is we are, actually before I do that, got one more thing I need to do. We gotta put our caps on. So with the caps, what we're gonna do we're going to take a little bit of grease. We're just going to put it on the edge. So this way we'll have grease in between the cap and the O-ring to keep the O-ring lubed. And again, to eliminate moisture from coming on the inside, right? So one cap's going to go here. Make sure to press it in all the way. And the other cap's going to go on the frame on the other side of the bike. Okay, put more grease on the top over here and make sure it covers the O-ring, put it all the way in. All right, then we're gonna have to attach the mechanism, the rear to the front, all right? Okay. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky because these bolts, it's a hexa bolt and those have to fit in. So it's a question of sort of juggling it around until it fits in. There we go. Up and down like that. Cool. So now what we're going to do is grab our bolts and put Loctite on the threads. 
clean the outside of these guys here. Make sure there's no grease. Make sure there's no grease on the threads on the inside. Also, the Loctite won't work all that well. At least blue won't. Certain reds would. We don't want red on these threads. Okay. One. Clean threads on this side. Make sure to have removed any old Loctite from in between the threads. Okay. So now, we can take a little dab of Loctite. We don't need that much. That's all you need. All right, shake it around. Let gravity do its thing. Done. Now, we'll take this guy, put him in by hand first. Always finger first. We're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put him in. Lock tight. It blew up so we could fall in between the threads just like that. We're going to put this guy on this side. Righty tighty. Fingers first. Let's go in. Right there. Ah, there you go. All right. So I am in. So now what I'm going to do is just lightly tighten everything down. I'm not going to torque everything down yet, okay? Because I want to work on the upper assembly first now that I know I'm going to be changing out the bushings up there too. So, and then when I'm all said and done, just lightly tighten it down just to make sure nothing falls apart. All right, no torquing anything. The best one newton meter. We'll take our pinch bolts and again, just lightly tighten them down. Okay. Okay. So we got up and down movement. We got swing movement. So right now we're good, but we still have to torque all this down. But first we're gonna work on replacing the upper bushings. So I was hoping not to have to replace the bushings up here, but since I have to replace, I'm going to be replacing the whole upper linkage. I might as well change this stuff out. I mean, my buddy did buy them. I was hoping to push out the replacement until maybe next season, right? So first things first, we need to take off. These are caps, right? And we just need to slowly wedge them out with a screwdriver, just like that. Just a really slow wedge. There we go. It doesn't take all that much. Okay. We'll just push out the other one. Might have to tap it. There we go. And slowly take out the other one here. Again, don't try and take it all out one side, just go side to side, bit by bit. So this way we don't warp anything or damage anything. There we go. Oops. There's also O-rings that are gonna come out with it. They're on the outside. Sometimes they'll come out, sometimes they won't. Mm. Okay, so I'm just at the odd angle here. There we go. Okay, so again, there's going to be O-rings. I'm going to need a pick for that. Yep, I'm going to need a pick. Maybe this will work. So it should be one on each side. Come on, I had you. I already took one of them out. Let's take this guy out. That's number three. And on the inside here, I believe we have number four. Or did I take this one out already? Boy, this guy's like squished in there. Oh, there you go. And number four. Okay, so now, according to IBIS, the best way to take this out is with the puller tool and a 10 millimeter or 3 8 socket with a cassette tool, right? And the idea is the cassette tool is basically going to act as a, a holding cage, and this part of the uh, socket will push out the 
bearing, right? So that being a case, what we're going to want to do is put the cassette tool on. I have to do it this side, I believe. Yep. Then remember this part. Is it in camera? Yes, this part will be pushing out the bearing, right? Okay, so we mounted it. Now it's just a question of pushing it all out. I want to make sure. Yep, it's coming out. It's definitely coming out. Not exactly ideal, in my opinion. I don't like the way the cassette tool goes into the carbon. But it's definitely pushing it out. I don't like that. I don't like the way he's doing it. It's dumb. Sorry, I just because it's dumb. Problem is now I started. I don't like that. I, I don't like that. Let's see if I can now take it out. Fire wedging it. Yep, there you go. Dumb. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. I really don't like the way they did that. In fact, let me try something different. All right. I don't think I just do it by hand. I could. You can do it by hand. It doesn't take all that much. Just push it out a little bit and take a needle nose and just pull it out. You do not need to use the cassette tool because again, cassette tool really grinds on the frame. So now we want to clean all this out. Let me get the alcohol. Get some cleaning tools here. Okay. plastic brush. That should help clean the seats where the O-rings are. Both sides. Okay, so now we have to put the new assembly in. Let me uh, go get the bag, open it up, and we'll take it from there. I am back with the bushings. We're going to install them, and we're going to need a bearing tool, install tool, to install them right. So again, this is the Ripley, the Ripley, the IBIS tool, bearing extractor and, and insertion tool. And I'm going to be using one of the spacers in order to have a flat side for the bushing to meet up against so I could evenly put it inside, right? Now there is a beveled edge and a flat edge. 
Flat edge goes on the outside. Beveled edge is going to help drive it in there easier, right? Oops. Where did that from? So we're going to put this in. And we're going to screw this. Should put both spacers on there so we don't have to screw in as much. Now, when we get to the base, just make sure that you are even so you can press evenly in. And there we go. And done. It's nice and snug. And we take this guy out. Yeah. <laughs> Crying out loud. Okay, I grab our other one and we do the same thing to the other side. All right. Grab our spacer tool, beveled edge to the outside, flat edge, or to the inside, beveled edge to the outside. Uh, beveled edge to the inside, flat edge to the outside. Now this is going to be a left handed. Okay. And now we screw and screw and screw and screw. Not sure what you can see, but again, we need to be sure that we are, when we get close to the base, that we are evenly installing this guy. And right there. All right, next, there are washers that go on each side. I'll put a little bit of grease on the washers. Okay, we just wanna coat the washers and we put them inside their seat. That's one. We're gonna put our glove. Make sure it is sitting inside the seat or else it'll catch onto the cap and tear. And then we won't have a washer. Uh. And I'm back after an overheat mishap. I need to remind myself not to go back to back to back with recording clips on these GoPros. So um, we had put in the seals for the upper bushings, right? Next, we will put in the caps and that is nothing more than taking them and just popping them in just like that. One on each side, squeeze them together until they touch in the middle, you will see it. All right, that's one set. And that is two sets, squeeze them together. And we're good. Now let's clean up any remaining grease. We do not want any remaining grease because dirt will collect in there and you'll hear the grinding. There's no need for grease to be there. Okay, next. We're gonna finish up, well, at least tie up the lower linkage, right? We need to tighten down the pinch bolts. In order to do that, if you notice, it goes up and down, right? And back and forth. So to do, we have to do these separately in different positions as far as tightening the pinch bolts, okay? For the drive side pinch bolt, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the linkage all the way down, and then we're gonna bring the triangle all the way front, okay? And once we got a front, just like that, we are going to tighten down to 10 newton meters. And we are there. So next for the other bolt, what we need to do is lift it up like that and Tie it down. Let's see if you can see that. No, nope, I don't know if you can see that. Yep, so basically we lifted the whole rear triangle upwards and then we are going to tighten this guy down to 10 newton meters. A little bit tricky for me on this side. Okay, let me go to the other side. So we get a good grip on this guy. So we gotta make sure he's up. There we go. And there we go. Ten. All right, he was done. So that was just the pinch bolts. Now we have to install the upper assembly, okay? There's a wider side 
and there's a thinner side. Thinner side goes towards the front, wider side goes towards the back. Flat side, the crossbar over here goes to the bottom, right? Now, what you can do to make life easier, you want to evenly insert, if you notice, there's like uh, uh, divots over here, and this is where the spacer is gonna fit into, basically, on each side. But you need to be even when installing it, right? If one side is further in than the other one, it's not gonna go in, so just try and start them off as even as you can, just like that, it'll go in, and then for the bottom, just put your thumbs underneath, and boom, done. It is in. Next, we wanna put in our bolts, right? We will start with the easy bolts first. We wanna put a little bit of Loctite on them. Just a bit, we don't need to go crazy. Just blow on it, and let gravity, let it sink into the thread. Now, it's your five millimeter, and make sure we are aligned. This guy seems to be aligned. We don't want to torque him down yet. Take our other one for the other side. A little bit of Loctite. Blow on him so he falls into the threads. Put them around until he gets aligned. Don't put too much pressure. You don't want to strip it just in case it isn't. There we go. Now it's easy. Okay, so he's aligned. Now we got to do the insides. Again with the Loctite. The only difference is with the inside, you're either going to need that small five millimeter Allen key or a mini ratchet. With a socket head, which I don't have. Now this one, try and screw it in my hand first, make sure he's aligned. We don't want to force this guy in here. I can tell you right now, he is not aligned. I think now I got him. Do, 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 do. I'd love to know how I'm gonna to torque this guy down to 10 newton meters. I don't have a crow's foot that small. One eternity later. All right, that's one. Let's take our second one. Little bit of Loctite. Blow on him, see if you blow on him, he just sinks right down with gravity, it's great. Hand first, wiggle them if you need to. That has to be it. Where am I lying? Uh. Okay. Good enough for now. Now, let's torque everything down. 10 Newton meters. This guy here. Ten. Ten. As for the upper bolts, I have no way of knowing. I have no way. I don't have a crow's foot small enough to get in here to put it to. 10 newton meters, so the best we could do is by feel, right? So at 10 newton meters, it'll be pretty stiff for the hand. I mean, it's a decent amount of force, right? So I would say right there is 10 newton meters, and I would say right there is around 10 newton meters, a little bit more, a little bit less. Now these two guys down here, they go down to two newton meters. All right, so that should be real easy. 2.35. Doesn't take all that much at all. 
<laughs> 2.35, go figure. Okay. So we are done with our lowers. We put in new bushings. All right. We have full flexibility going up. Um, now it's a question of putting in the clevis and the shock. All right. What we want to do is clean the clevis. Just clean the insides over here. I will do that so it doesn't have to be on camera. Clean. Well, we already cleaned this part over here. Just make sure all the grime and mud and grit is gone and we'll put it back together. Also clean the bolts. Okay, we are back. We had cleaned our clevis and our shock head. I also cleaned the mounts. These mounts were already cleaned, right? So um, this is a nice clevis, way better than before in my opinion. Um, very easy to identify direction. So basically bolt head goes up, right? Instead of uh, having two bolts that connected together basically or a bolt and a nut that were a shaft style that connect together, they just have one bolt that actually goes directly into the clevis this portion of it goes down, right? So we put it in, now we have a nut and a bolt, right? And this is a custom nut that goes on the inside. There's only one way to put it. There's an actual, um, it fits in one way only on this side, right? Now I would say, well, now I would say, make sure to put in Loctite on your bolt before tightening it down. I'm not gonna do that because I have to take this apart and completely uh, rebuild the shock on this bike right after this. It's gonna be my next job on this bike, right? So I'm just showing you guys just how to put this guy in, right? So again, much nicer than before. So we put in this teardrop type nut. Again, it only fits in one spot. Make sure you align the hole. Sometimes you gotta lift the back. And done. So basically, we would tighten that down, right? I think it was a five. Actually, that's a four. Back part was a six. All right, so we would tighten him down, and then we put in, what did I do with the shock bolt? Oh yeah, it's in my pocket. So then we have a shock bolt, and again, it's nice, this mount, because it only goes in one side. The nut's actually mounted on the other side, right? So there's only one way to put it in, which is a nice detail. Okay, and basically we just take him and we screw him down, right? And again, I think that one's a five millimeter. Yep. And basically we just screw him down. And don't forget, there's a bolt on this side as well, right? So. These guys only go in one way, and then you would screw him down. Again, I'm not gonna fully screw him down because I gotta take it apart and work on that shock. So, that's the end of the job. We have officially changed out the bottom bushings, the main linkage, and the top bushings on an Ibis Ripley V4 frame. The whole top part was unexpected. I was hoping not to do this, but what are you gonna do? Bearings wore out on the linkage, and uh, I figured why not just do the bushings at the same time and uh, give them another 2,000 miles before we got to do this again. Not a hard job, folks. I am fairly confident you guys could do this. If you experience creaks as you're pedaling on an uphill, on the downstroke in particular, I am beyond confident that your issue will be the bushing on a V4 frame, the bottom bushing on a V4 frame, or the lower eccentric core on a V1, two or three frame, okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm very confident that's gonna be the issue. So hopefully this video helps you solve that problem if you're experiencing it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, please give it two thumbs down. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will get to them. Click the bell to subscribe if you want. I have more videos coming. Um, next, I will be working on this shock over here. I'm thinking about doing this as an ASMR video as a whole, so we'll see. Um, and I have to do the fork. It's a Fox fork on this bike, and I also have to bleed uh, the Shimano brakes on this thing. All right, so looking forward to the next videos. Hope you guys have a great weekend, and we will see you soon. Take care.